Hi everyone, Bruce Schwartz. I really appreciate you for checking out this one. I have many important videos that I wish more people would view sometimes, but I guess that's life and reaching a whole world. Wow, I mean, is it even possible? We saw this last video, now we're seeing it closer. I'm always trying to get closer to the surface and when I get a photo better, I share it. It's my goal, it's why I'm here. Thanks for the support, everyone. Bottom right levels and connected levels different levels with corridors or pipes or maybe they're even footing holding up the other levels i don't know but we're looking at a definite definitely constructed surface and i found something new like i always am finding something new and i'm going to share it with you guys and show you the tunnel another area of tunnelization it is pure tunnelization construction and that's what I believe and that's what I want to share and show you. Some really cool things uh, gathering over the years uh, that I've been doing this now. Look at the center there, the dark object. There's something that really gets to me about the straight edge and features. So, I mean, I'm not nuts. One of the things that I'm showing um, look constructed. And there are several that, well, there, look at this. Did you not see this? To the left is also a rectangle there. I mean, there's a lot of proof that the surface was manipulated in so many different areas. And it's all areas that are very common to uh, people. Here it is further out and now without any filtering. Whatever, right? Um, sh putting a green filter over a top of a photo is not manipulating a photo in any way. Which, hey, sometimes filters are needed. And don't worry, I'll use them when I need them. What's that? That's the most amazing finding you'll ever see on the surface of the moon. Probably one of them. Inside of these areas that look to be, seem to be de deliberately covered. Do you see what you're looking at? Are we not close enough? Well, let's get in a little closer to see the um, construction. What I believe is construction. See, it looks like it has the same reflectivity, first of all, as the surface of the moon, right? So they're very hard to distinguish, hard to differentiate from the surface itself. But when you zoom in and you see these straight edges and I go and look at them in more detail, I say, geez, there's always an area of construction. Here, these dark structures, I've already showed you a couple on the way. Uh, I've documented and accumulated a few of these, of these dark areas, which at some point, <laughs> I think they're dark structures, right? Like this is Sinus Iridum, and we'll see it zoomed out later. Bianchini City, nothing else I can say about that area. This is the end of the mountain of Sinus Iridum. Also another great part, looks like a tunnel going in there or some type of straight massive um, line. Could be a corridor again. I call them corridors. I mean, they're going to and from each of the bloody objects. They have to be some type of corridor, either liquid or some type of being going through them or substance. I mean, they're there for a reason. Maybe electricity, right? The moon looks like a bloody uh, motherboard, a circuit board. Could be a spaceship. I mean, haha, we laugh about it. And uh, no, I'll probably never be able to prove that and probably won't even linger on it. But hey, it's at the back of our mind. I think of it all the time. So just to show you again, the bottom left, that's where we were, uh, Bianchini Crater top right, and all of this structuring inside the Apennine Mountains. There's a lot of proof there on the surface that's unseen, and it's straight up in front of us. It's like no one's seeing it. I heard NASA, uh, probably last year or something like that, maybe even uh, less than that, talking about going to the moon and uh, building a base inside of the lava tubes. Have you guys heard about lava tubes? Well, let me tell you, I thought it was really ironic because I'm saying to myself, whoa, wait a minute, that's what I'm finding. You know, these tube-like constructed objects. And this is a very good example right here, Bianchini Crater. This is 40 miles from it, my friends. We're leaning right on it. It's just to say that I cut it out of the photo. And look at the surface structures. I couldn't see these smaller structures. I could only see the big ones, the white ones that you're seeing. And upon zooming up, I saw smaller structures. So yeah, it took me a while to really understand to that I had to zoom up more and to slow it down. But the high definition, there's bridge, corridor, again, bridges and corridors. 
uh, yeah, I had to really up the quality, like now with the 46 megapixel camera, which helped in like tremendously. Um, Aristarchus Crater here at the plateau. I'm giving you guys an idea of exactly the geography of the moon, exactly what it looks like. And at one point, um, I am going to create a map uh, you know, I'd love to do it with a program three dimensional on the surface, like point to an area and this pops up like in Google maps. Yeah. I mentioned it. You can be sure someone will jump on it. So, so go for it guys. I don't really care because I'm, I'm just showing raw truth and that's my goal here. It's not to be the best or to show this the best way, but I'm trying to show it in a way that we can, uh, really profit from it. So right here, all I can think of is fragile rock construction. Looks like glass tubing. Same reflectivity of the surface. You know, remember that? When I was a kid, I'm 44 or so. Yeah, fragile rock. They used to build these glass structures. We don't see it. I'm going to have to do some tests with you guys with some white paper outside in the sun and some shade. Sounds so primitively stupid, but it's amazingly effective to show you guys what I'm trying to tell you about these structures having the same reflectivity as the surface. So now add a haze over this and add some cloud cover, natural or not, which it is on the surface. This is a, an amazing view that no one's ever seen that I've never shown this way, especially Copernicus Crater, guys. Look around it. Never mind saying it's blurry or not. You, you, you must understand what zooming in does. Well, this is pretty amazing for us to be able to see it because we're seeing the detail without the bloody pixelation. As hard as it is to zoom in, we are still seeing some uh, proof, a lot of proof, even though we're not seeing this on a golden platter. You know, we don't have to, and we probably never will be able to. Think of the ones that... Um, the CIA showed us and, and the Pentagon de declassifying UFOs. They're all blurry. Everyone still appreciates them. I don't see what this is not to appreciate. Eratosthenes, another amazing area at the end of the Apennine Mountains. Large object here just underneath Eratosthenes. And where you see Eratosthenes M up there, it's because just over top is Eratosthenes M crater. There's a lot of Eratosthenes craters. There's, there are also a lot of Copernicus craters, several of them. You know, you start looking deeper into the names of these um, areas. Here's without uh, any color or filter that you literally see, compare the two pictures. It's the same thing you just saw right now. It, you're seeing the same thing, except the structures have the same reflectivity. So hard to differentiate. See, just that simple toning it down, showing it without manipulating it. There's no manipulation and you see it clear as day all around Eratosthenes Crater, these beautiful, beautiful structures that I've never seen before in public. Listen, I know it because I was looking on the internet. I was looking on YouTube and everywhere trying to see real surface. Check this out, guys. Inversion. Do you see what's there? The same glass tubing like structures I'm not saying it's glass, but it definitely has that type of look, right? Or reflectivity, um, almost see-through or clear basaltic structures, very whitish gray, dull. Um, you know, it's reflective. It's hard to see the surface, but yeah, it really is there. Look at the, um, I looked at the declared Apollo 11 moon landing areas. Um, well, area, but all the areas around it and very close to it. And you see these square platforms, and this is very close. I'm talking 30 miles um, where they landed. And you see this, it's a clear constructed object, or, or it looks symmetrical. It is symmetrical. This here too, where they landed, a V-shaped object standing high off the surface. Pretty cool to see. And listen, for me, that's the research. I'd love to show it. A lot clearer than that and I will but this is how we're gonna have to do it this is how we do it we have no choice to do it this way guys you know why because we have to wait for clearings there's a real atmosphere down there or up there on the moon really is a haze and a cloud and at times we can see through it and you know that veil under the veil and we can see ever so clearly on the surface it's just incredible the complexity of the surface is, it's untouched. It's unimaginable. And people haven't even gone close to the archeological 
findings that could be found on the surface. Just incredible. The frenzy of people wanting to, I mean, this would um, activate everything science related on earth. Magazines would be talking about it. Television shows would be um, uh, talked about. Um, this would be talked about on televisions. I mean, documentaries would be made, books would be written, interviews would be done. Then it would dig back into the past and, you know, everything that was a, a myth or uh, classified in the path would become a reality and we'd know without even having it have to be declassified. I mean, why? Because we're using common sense. For me, finding this on the surface, well, you know, people do their research and base them on um, ancient scripts or whatever findings, Anunnaki. I mean, I have nothing against that, but what I'm just trying to do is show you guys is construction on the moon, no matter what it may be, um, whether it defies the Bible or whatever. I don't care. I'm showing you what's there and everyone should know it because it's really there. And it's just a raw, straight up truth a way of showing the surface without manipulating it or tampering with it. It's so easy. This massive line going through this, um, would you see the setup? Wow, um, almost 100 miles wide. Can you imagine the size? Uh, wow. Whoa, hold on, actually not true. This is like 39, 35 uh, miles wide, not larger. Uh, Copernicus crater is three times bigger than this entire white area. So don't forget, it's just over top. So incredible, the size of this though, uh, the complexity, all a setup that looks very industrial on the surface, who knows what they're doing, um, you know, active, inhabited or not, uh, ancient or not, some one still was up there. UFOs on the surface, not just UFOs, flying in formation, side by side, appearing, uh, across the surface of the moon in long, wide um, strands. Guys, we're talking about a thousand miles. These UFOs are bloody surfing over the surface of the moon at high speeds and totally like military style watching the surface. That's how easy it could be for them. So just shooting that out there, imagine landing on the moon, what they would have encountered, who they would have encountered. Two people, whoa, are you serious? Two elders are going to go to the moon. <laughs> well, they're elders now. But anyways, here's a flash of light. Come on. Seriously. You know, he had a background, Armstrong, of uh, construction. Did you, did you know that? He knew a lot about construction. Mm -hmm.